Okay, well, thank you so much for joining me this morning or afternoon. Uh, my name is Sunny Chen. I'm the Executive Director of Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies. And I am just thrilled to be able to share with you the great work we've been um, doing. Thank you for the introduction, Carissa. Um, I'm kind of going to zip through these slides. We have a lot of slides to go over because um, there's just so much I wanted to share with you folks. But um, we have a multidisciplinary staff. Uh, we're a nonprofit that's been around since 1992. Um, you can read our mission statement right there. But really, we have created this team with a you know, whatever it takes attitude to go out into the community and provide um, maternal health services. And um, Dr. Judy Moore Peterson, I've had some conversations about um, putting light into bringing more help to the moms, um, pregnant and parenting women at Hawaii. So thank you for this opportunity. Um, our multidisciplinary staff, as you can see their credentials, um, we have a very unique a model that we follow. We have an EPRN with um, uh, midwives at the community level um, that um, also work in tandem with uh, doulas that speak multiple languages, um, including Korean, Tagalog, Chukis. Um, we also have LCSWs, nurses, lactation consultants, and CSPs that work in um, tandem with case management. Just to give you a visual, this is what our team looks like. Um, I don't have our doulas on, um, on here, but on our website, you could see our amazing doulas that also support our families. And um, you can also see that our credentials kind of cross-pollinate. I have a nursing background with a, lactation, uh, with a lactation background as well. And so do some of our midwives and nurses and we kind of cross-pollinate in that way. Um, who we serve, so 39% of our families are Native Hawaiian. That that got a little bit diluted because of um, our COVID vaccines and testing, uh, testing numbers in the last two years. 50% um, identify as Pacific Islanders, 42% are single mothers, 41% um, are on Medicaid, 47% are receiving either WIC, SNAP, or both. And you can see the breakdown in, at the bottom there by health plan. Um, HMSA, obviously, 25%. Um, and then you can see a lot followed by Aloha Care and then United and Kaiser. Um, <clears throat> TRICARE is the one that kind of always surprises me. We always have about 5 to 10% in a lot of our programs that are um, either veterans or have some sort of affiliation with the military just because of um, the nature of Hawaii having such a large military presence and a lot of mothers just seeking help outside of um, what's available for the military just to kind of get out of the military setting. Um, so that's been um, something that we've also focused on and a lot of, although um, they may not be single, they may not have their partner with them because um, their partner might be deployed or not in state at the moment. So a lot of our doulas do accompany military families as well. These are a little quick overview of our programs and services. I can't really go into the detail of every program. We're gonna really focus in on how the integration of the programs affect our um, maternal mental health programs. And, um, but you can see that, you know, we have a clinical service arm um, that accompanies our doula services. Uh, we have perinatal um, education, childbirth education, uh, new parent support groups, tobacco cessation, lactation support. Um, one of the main programs, core prep programs that a lot of uh, our partners know us by is Hawaii Crips for Kids and Pico Pals, which is a safe sleep education, um, you know, supported off most, mostly by the Department of Health. Um, since 2013, and we do anywhere from 200 to 400 safe sleep classes and pack and plays um, to families a year. We also do emergency food and essential provisions like cribs and diapers, and we have um, official partnerships with over 35 partner agencies in the community. We recently started a community-based doula program, which I will touch on, and 24-hour um, um, seven days a week telehealth platform that we also recently started. So really, um, when I sought out to see what, how we would integrate 
uh, the healthcare arm for Healthy Mothers, Healthy Babies, which historically was a social service organization, we really wanted to make mental health a priority. And um, for, for most of us on this call, we know that, you know, the one-year postpartum suicide and substance abuse are the leading causes of maternal deaths. Maternal mental health conditions such as anxiety, postpartum depression, um, birth-related PTSD are the most common complications of pregnancy and childbirth. It affects one in seven women, but in the families that we serve, we would say it's closer to one in five. And um, what's more alarming is that 75% of these, um, these conditions go untreated. And um, studies show that 100% of these conditions respond to early intervention. So we sat down and when we looked at what mental health integration would look like within our programs, we really wanted to change the narrative and integrate behavioral health into everything we do and normalize the talk with our families because often women of color, um, the families we serve, there is a stigma about talking about mental health issues. And how do we make it accessible and how do we break down the very barriers that keep people from accessing help? So we really, um, through, uh, through the ROSE program, it's called Reach Out, Stay Strong Essentials for Mothers of Newborn. We, um, it's an empirically validated prevention intervention for postpartum depression. So um, it, is, it is conducted by the um, Univer uh, Michigan State University. And we are being, um, we are part of a three-year cohort. We are being studied um, by how these interventions that we've integrated, these classes and these this behavioral health component into all of our programs have an effect um, for mental health um, in, our, in our priority population. So it's uh, educational classes structured throughout all of our programs. Um, they provide health care to low-income pregnant women, and um, they're funded by the NIH to help clinics and agencies that serve low-income pregnant women to learn and use ROSE as part of their routine care. It's highly structured, easy to learn, easy to be delivered. And uh, we kind, uh, they gave us the flexibility to be able to integrate it well, um, to make it work for our programs and the, the families that we serve. Um, let's see. So um, maternity contributing factors, uh, pilot po population. So, uh, the take-home message here, um, if you look at the, if you look at all of the statistics, you see that 90% of the NICU babies were born to mothers enrolled with the same Medicaid um, plan as babies. So this is looking um, closely at our partner, Aloha Care, one of our initial partners, and um, kind of discussing where we would go um, next steps and how our partnership what it would look like. Um, and we found that 73% began prenatal care in their first or second trimester. 41% of mothers were supported by their OB case management team. And um, engagement in case management did not tend to correlate to avoidance of NICU. So, you know, we were thinking, you know, it makes us wonder what impactful primary interventions can we use outside of trying to decrease just number of NICU days. Um, the majority of the Medicaid population were born to um, impactable members. So pregnant and birthing people where health plans could actually have an impact on the health of the baby. There was this huge opportunity here to find the four out of the 10 members who haven't seen the P their PCPs in the last two years. Um, and um, personally, I see this on the front lines where a mobile clinic is finding people when we go to our partner organizations and shelters that we serve, whether it be for reproductive health or PPD screenings or um, a simple STD test, anything. Um, but this is our chance for early intervention at the community health level. And we can't just assume that people are gonna go out and get care on their own. So um, this was a huge opportunity that we were really excited about to get started, um, started with, with our Allah Care Partnership. So our perinatal support program, um, Mana Mama is designed to be a supplemental program, not to replace their regular care um, and take place of their OBs or their normal PCPs. 
and um, who have established relationships. We're really trying to find the four out of the 10 women that we spoke about in the previous slides, nor is it designed to take the place of high-risk care management by the health plan or the designee. So the program reaches out to engage and wrap around significant um, services for the women that um, pregnant and parenting families that we serve. And, um, you know, they may not have been identified as high risk or targeted um, by their your complex care coordination team, but they may still have significant social and behavioral needs. So when it comes to identifying those individuals um, who lack information or for cultural reasons, or maybe do not um, go into timely care, our goal is always the same. Get the individual into timely appropriate care, whether it be medical, behavioral health, or social services. Ultimately, care coordination and permanent, permanent care should be with the primary care or long-term sustainable behavioral health supports um, where the member has best access. Um, so within, um, we started the Monomama Mobile Clinic and our prenatal um, care last March in 2021. And 100% um, of the members that we served with, had positive depression screens and received some sort of intervention through HMHB. Um, and of the members called and reached, um, even if they didn't need direct mental health services at the moment, 86% were engaged with HMHB in some other way, which whether that means postpartum meal services or emergency meal services or connections to WIP or SNAP. In 2022, um, our future evaluation of outcomes will include um, PPC, uh, prenatal and postpartum measures, uh, depression screening measures, vaccin uh, perinatal vaccination measures, uh, rates of pre pregnancy intention screening, cost of pregnant members and inf infants of members, um, and maternal and other maternal infant health outcomes. Um, so this is a little bit complex, but um, I wanted to go over, you don't have to, and you, you guys could kind of look at the slide deck late, later in detail, but the Aloha Care team and I, um, with our team, really went over uh, workflows management of, um, you know, what, what the data sharing would look like between health, um, our health plan, uh, the health plan and healthy mothers, healthy babies and um, what the follow-up of the members would be. Uh, we're able to quickly receive data and send data um, and use information to reach um, members through mail, phone, or telehealth options. Um, screenings include depression screenings and social determinants of health screenings, as well as questions about the member or infant plan for continuity of care. We have the capacity to develop unique plans for all members who choose to engage. Um, and it could be basic education, home-based perinatal care, cribs, food, lactation, culturally matched doula support. Um, and uh, we're hoping that this model can expand to other partnerships and other health plans in the future. Thanks, Sunny. Um, just wanna jump in here quickly because we do have some Q&A for you. Do you have any like last minute um, notes to close off the conversation or close off the presentation before we jump into Q&A? Um, yeah, we'll co quickly go through the pilot results because the pilot results is really, um, really interesting. And I think people on the call would really like to see this. So um, bottom line, you can kind of see um, all our pilot results there and read it. Sorry, it's a lot of words, but we do have a really high success rate of engagement because of the relationships we have. And uh, with, with with uh, clients, whether it be through all uh, our social services or telehealth platform. And I quickly wanted to go through like a screenshot of our telehealth platform and what that looks like. It wasn't really highlighted as much as I wanted in the original application. This is a sample of a conversation that happened between one of our lactation nurses and lactation specialists who um, had a mom who came in through our telehealth platform saying she was suffering from postpartum depression. And you can see there's a lot of conversations in between missing, but you can see that she's wanting help. Uh, we got connected to a per, her connected to a provider and the time to connect to a provider was less than 30 minutes. 
And we also supported her and got her into Pico Pals New Parent Support. This member story was in our application as well, but it kind of is a culmination of firsthand what it looks like when our mobile clinic and team goes out to see, um, see somebody with access to care issues and um, the mental health component there where she's had, you know, she has issues with, um, you know, being able to kind of adjust to having the new baby. And then the next time we come back and we boost the whole family with COVID um, vaccines and we follow up via text message, phone calls and give her a lot of social support. So you can see she's got the well baby check, family planning visits, mental health screenings, COVID-19 outreach, diaper distribution, and food distribution. So um, the other thing is we've been recognized by um, the Medicaid for uh, Innovation on Mana Mama and the work that we've done during COVID-19 and the outreach that we've done at the community level and will be featured as an in-depth case study. So we're really excited about that as well. And I'd be remiss if I didn't um, talk about our statewide partners that we um, I had touched on before. Um, you know, this work isn't done alone. Um, we certainly have a champion within Aloha Care to also make this possible and all the, you know, the intricate details of the data exchange that needs to happen. Um, but these are our current statewide partners that we keep updated MOUs and BA agreements with so that we can um, help our families in need and together we can move the needle one family at a time. So um, thank you and I will 